Hello, everybody. Welcome back, everyone. So for our next session, Mirror Experience Creator and Facilitator, Jonathan White and Designer of Mirror Workshop Experiences, Hillary Jenkins from Hero Studio, will share ways to apply visual narrative to workshops in a game format. Sounds exciting. So Jonathan, Hillary, we can't wait to see what you've got for us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Natalie. That's a great introduction and hello, everybody. I think there's no need to delay on actually showing what we have to go on today. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm hoping that the team can get a link for everybody uh, to our Miro board into the chat. So here it comes, folks. We've been waiting a long, long time to get this uh, in front of your eyeballs. So we should start to see people pouring into this experience very soon. Um, what we wanted to run through today, though, um, was a quick run through on how to use visual storytelling in your Miro experience creation so that you can create great templates, you can create great workshops, uh, and get people engaged and excited to see what is going on. So on our screen today, we wanted to keep a very gamified theme um, with the workshop that we run for today. So uh, let's dive into this amazing world a little bit. I hope it's getting everybody as excited as uh, it's getting us excited here. So we'll climb down into our welcome area. We're seeing the people pour into, uh, into our space. So I'll make sure I bring everyone on down. And one of the first things we wanted to show you was a bit of a throwback. Uh, we've got some old school GIFs down here that when you get onto the board, um, I'm just gonna zoom out a bit and zoom back in to see if I can get these funny things to load. Um, they should start playing for you automatically. There goes Hillary. <laughs> waving her hair around. We decided to 8-bit style for everything that we're doing. Uh, but basically, we're adventurers in Miro. We love going around. We love the Miroverse, everything about it. Um, we've collected some XP, XP. We fought some bosses. We've, we've collected some loot. And now we're here to share some of the wisdom and skills that we've learned with you. My name is John. Uh, I'm with Hero Studio, the founder of it. And we create amazing Miro experiences that rely on visual storytelling, flow, and getting everybody engaged so that we can all share these amazing experiences. And our designer, Hillary, I'll let her introduce herself because she's um, responsible for the amazing creation we're going to go through today. I'm Hillary, and I have a past history in publishing and storytelling. So when uh, John asked me to do design with him, it's been super fun. So I'm his designer, and we're going to go on this little adventure together. That's it. So we have six levels to bring you through as part of our game today. Um, and um, I'd like everybody, if you can, to come to this area of the board and start to indicate where your level of comfort is in Miro while I quickly take us through our agenda for this session today. So you can go ahead and grab one of these happy heart faces up here and drag it down onto this continuum to let us know how you're feeling in Miro typically. Are you all Miro experts out there? Um, are there people that are new to Miro? Are you feeling kind of uh, competent and good to go? So come on to this area of the board and start to grab some of these uh, shapes here and drag it into our little heart-based timeline um, so that we can hear what you got to think. While that is happening, um, I'd like to um, talk about what we're going to go through. So in addition to the icebreaker that we got going on today, um, we'd like to talk about a few essential design principles talk about storytelling and flow and how we use that in our builds. Um, we have an activity for everyone to complete and a little bit of Q&A we, we can use to follow up there and then a quick retrospective and wrap up. We wanna make sure we hear from you, what you think, what you're looking for in the future. Um, that would be all fantastic. Not seeing a lot of action on the, um, uh, on the uh, rating here for how comfortable people are feeling. So. Hopefully, if there's any kind of a uh, delay with what we're saying, I'm not seeing people. I know people are on this board, but I'm not quite seeing cursors either. But we're just going to roll with the punches as we kind of move through here today. Hills, are you able to move any of the stuff on the board? I just want to confirm before we yeah. move too far forward. OK. Excellent. OK, well, let's shift over. Um, to our icebreaker for today. And we just wanted to have a little bit of fun with everybody, uh, practice some of our Miro skills and, and have a good laugh. So in level one of the icebreaker, I'll bring everybody along. What I would like to do is have folks kind of get into building some avatars here. Um, so we have some various elements uh, throughout here. We have a head, we have some hats and hair, we have bodies, mouths, eyes, legs. 
These are stacks of objects too here, folks. So you can take a set that should be a set under. Um, there's some scarcity of resources here as you want to get the best parts, I'm sure, for yourself. But go on in and start to build um, an avatar for yourself. And you can either leave it in the dark area, you can group the shapes together um, once you start to build that avatar. And um, what we're gonna do is start to place these avatars all over this part of our build, which if I just zoom back a little bit, um, is to show you that it is an ice cave. So the, this whole adventure started out in a lava cave, we transitioned into an ice cave, we're gonna transition up to the third level very soon. Uh, that has a lot of lakes and oceans. So I want folks to have um, a, a little bit of time to build. I see some people are now getting to the um, getting to the uh, initial part of rating their stuff. So hopefully we'll start seeing some action in the icebreaker section. Um, and if there is a bit of a delay with what I'm saying, I don't want to be pulling people uh, on the mirror board too much because you might not hear the instructions of what's going on and I'll be pulling you to a new section of the board. Um, but here we go. We're getting our level of comfort in Miro all wrapped up. I'm sure we're going to see the uh, icebreaker start to populate itself very soon. So maybe we'll just have some uh, entertaining uh, a moment here, Hillary, before we transition into our level two section. Maybe Hills, you and I can build a quick avatar here to show folks. Oh yeah, that would be so good. So we'll just get into it. I always like this kind of fancy suit looking guy here. So I'll just drag some of these. Because <laughs> you're fancy. Oh yeah, so fancy. So folks, we like you in this avatar uh, build as part of our uh, part of our workshops as one element because it forces you to move a lot of objects around in Miro. Um, you can obviously put a lot of character and your own story into these boards, which is why uh, we like this so, so much. Um, people um, can kind of create their own identity via these avatars um, and take that around with them in the board experience. So it kind of feels like something to bring with you on the adventure through. Uh, it's quite uh, quite a fun way to go. So we get a little bit of fun hair on this guy. Oh, we're gonna have a little bit of a board stink as well. And it's always good too with these little bits that you can bring them to the front if you need them to be on top of your head or in a different place on. Yeah. That is absolutely right. So I guess what we can say while that is um, um, kind of loading, maybe a lot of traffic going through uh, through Miro right now, um, design and storytelling is such a big part of the work that we do because um, we're going to get into some, some more specifics around it. But basically, it's so much nicer to engage with good looking experience rather than kind of, you know, um, static or really... Um, uninspiring kind of content. And, and the unfortunate part of it is, is I think it takes time to put effort into um, a, a good design in your, in your kind of Miro builds. And some people don't want to go through that level of effort because maybe they don't see the return um, or maybe their skill set's not quite up there. Um, but, but what we definitely want to be doing here, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen until this reloads. Sorry about that, folks. I can see people moving on the board. So mine's still loading, Excellent. but there's a lot of activity happening. So okay, right on. it's good. Oh, there we go. Is yours refreshing? Mine's good now. So yeah. Okay, got, right on. Like, people building their creatures. Pieces. So if you're in there, Hillary, just while my board is continuing to refresh, why don't you fire up and start to uh, give us a little bit of content around design principles? Yeah, we could get up into the uh, level two with the ocean theme. So we've got essential design principles is level two after the icebreaker. And we've kind of broken down here a lot of the kind of key points that I'm gonna go through for this section that kind of helps tell your visual story and make a good design. So um, we've got a little example here at the bottom that in is a classroom champions is a, is a client that we worked with and we used a lot of these design principles in making this board. So there's one of the first is obviously you need to have a purpose for this board because you know you need to know why you're making it. Who your audience is is always really important because you need to appeal to them in uh, what the look and feel and what information you're getting across is. The visual identity and branding. A lot of the times uh, the people we work with have already established branding. So we use that as like an anchor point to jump off from. Uh, content, subject matter, 
is obviously very important in what you want to get across. Colors, typography, and imagery is very important in terms of what the uh, mood you want to get across and what the um, the clients or even your message needs to be in terms of the atmosphere or the vibe and the emotional inspiration. Sometimes you want a more playful feel, which is kind of what we went for here in our board today. Or um, sometimes you want a bit more of a corporate analytical way of operating. So you need to kind of consider that in how you're presenting that information. So we have here an example in our classroom champions board. So we had, if you think about purpose, our purpose for this was to help classroom champions, who's is a, um, they get um, athletes, mon <laughs> there's mentors as athletes and to help children, they come into schools and do uh, video uh, messages to help inspire children in their learning in public school. So a lot of this are, was focused around a kind of a sports theme. And so we went with this kind of uh, stadium sort of look that wasn't specifically one sport, but kind of helped encapsulate the thought and the feeling of sport. So, because a lot of these uh, mentors are Olympic athletes and all professional athletes. So we did kind of a sports theme for the arena, for onboarding, our uh, audience was obviously the people who were joining that business and they needed to know what their job was, what their expectations were, what the culture was, who they were working with and connecting with. The branding and visual identity was already established. So we just riffed on that, used the same colors, the same kind of themes. Um, the content subject matter was something we worked with them on. So then they provided us a lot of content for the um, culture and for inspiration and moments in the company's history, which was really helpful. And then we also used, um, oh. Whoa, what happened there? Uh-oh. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Just we had a duplicate of the background. <laughs> 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 so yeah, and then the emotional inspiration was the company's general feel is to be friendly and very open and ready for evolution and um, wanting people to be able to ask questions. So they wanted it to be something that was very approachable. Uh, and then if we go just a little bit below, kind of under the water here, we've got just some easy to follow Miro ways of of applying those skills. So there's um, using directionality. We went with ascending for this board today. And for a lot of the boards we do, we do an ascending because it's kind of a building of that information, a building of that story that you're kind of walking an experienced person or a person through. There's uh, always composition to consider because you want things to be um, visually pleasing. Uh, a lot of the time when we make these boards, we do a mood board first, which helps us kind of anchor our thoughts in what our headers are going to be in terms of fonts and sizes, uh, what theme in terms of color or stock photography we want to do. So that kind of helps us refer back in, in what our kind of core values of the design of this experience, whatever it is you're making. And then of course, alignment, um, that's just a, a really easy thing in Miro now because you, you can just get it all lined up and use those little blue lines that pop up so that everything feels like it's kind of all making sense together. Yeah, that's right. I know we had a crowd. Um, Natalie, if it's you who's been sharing, can you throw the share back to me? My screen or my board loaded properly so I can, I can take over those responsibilities again to make sure we're focused on the right material. Thank you for uh, jumping in, whoever was sharing the screen. Thank you. Um, Hillary, we had a question about this uh, amazing background that was built for this particular experience. So um, that is a custom build, everybody. <laughs> it is. We we kind of we came at it with an idea, like a, just a little crumb of an idea, and then uh, it just blew up into this. And all of this is made, obviously, in Photoshop. It's um, I took many many photos and kind of created an imaginary world and then made it into an 8-bit by downgrading the pixels and kind of 
messing with all the little variations of pixels, a lot of playing with little pixels. So that's where we got to this so that each stage of this learning journey can be of a kind of a themed biome that we wanted to get across to make it extra fun and more of a memorable experience. I do. Maybe we can jump into the storytelling section a little bit. Um, and I just ask, I see some folks playing around in our activity later, maybe doing that puzzle. You're, you're cheating a little oh. bit. We want to get a bit of a timed activity event. So I see uh, Lara is over there <laughs> messing with that. I, I guess I like the eagerness, but maybe just wait a little bit if you don't mind. Um, yeah. And Hills, you want to take us down? Um, we, we thought we'd create this storytelling section here of content, not only to pass along what runs through our head when we're creating our experiences, but also we wanted, because we had taken um, a, a decent amount of time to create this experience, we wanted to use it as an example of what, what went through our heads. So maybe Hills can take us through a little bit of our considerations around storytelling. Yeah, because we're all taking it in all the time, you know, like there's, we're taking in media and our brain processes visuals far faster than we can process a written thing. So, uh, and it helps us remember it. So if you imagine you're telling a story or even trying to learn something and you place it in an, in an space, in even if it's in your brain, imagining it, or in an experience like this, it's far easier to recall those thoughts and those um, learnings from whatever that experience or presentation you're putting, getting across. So this is another reason why we try and create these custom experiences so that it's easier to recall, it's more fun and engaging. So we've kind of got some stats here that help support that, it, you know, in terms of visual content, spoken content and written content and how their, their impact, the, obviously the visual content is far greater of an impact. It helps engage people. It increases the retention, like we said. Um, it promotes critical thinking, improves, uh, it, it, it fosters empathy and inclusion. So it, it can get people really connected when you're working through something together in this fun kind of an environment. So yeah, we've got like people standing on the mountain, which is just what I was hoping. That's exactly what we were hoping for, folks. <laughs> Did you see this in the feed? These avatars are unbelievably it's great. So good. They're all living in this land now. I think one of the biggest elements of storytelling, uh, Hillary, that I get is um, it really helps people to abstract their thinking up a level, right? Because some people get really stuck in the details, but it often helps if we can think of topics at an abstract level and then kind of hone in on the specifics that we want to get into. And we've really found that Miro is opening up the door for these types of experiences set up within this infinite workspace. So you can look at that 10,000 foot view and get the feel the impact, get that memorable experience. Like this is the island design. This is the, the world, the video game world. Then that's what sticks in your head. And then the content you learn within will be triggered more easily because you'll have that abstract um, thought to, to, to put above it. And that's, so that's one of the reasons I think this is like something we're all learning as we use Miro more and more. Um, and it's one of the biggest mind benders that we found with people is shifting from confined in a slide of what I can put to all of a sudden, whoa, there's no space limitations. Um, we can really tell interesting stories this way. And speaking to that, John, if you wouldn't mind zooming out, we can kind of talk about that for a second, because um, when you come into these experiences, it's something that I really had to wrap my brain around was that I'm used to publishing in print, which is obviously on a surface, you have restrictions, where this is infinite. So we always like to consider that first impact, make sure that, you know, you've got your branding, you've got your, you know, colors and everything's really, you know, inviting. And mm -hmm. then you can have those kind of macro like those kind of zoom in abilities to get deeper and deeper into those that information that story and move through that experience so the 10,000 foot's really a great way to have an impact yeah yeah so take them through um maybe a little bit of our thinking as we went through this because it wasn't just a, oh we're doing a, a talk at into the mirror verse oh fine we'll just whip something together a lot of thought goes into this yeah, we, we have a, like a whole nother board with just our process of thought process that got us to here. So we worked through these kind of these central points. And then I'll talk about how we've intentionally done that within this board. So the central theme, obviously, for us was learning through play and storytelling. That's our our theme and the audience, we knew that it would be a wide audience of people who are interested in Miro and curious, which is a 
really a lovely thing to have have as like a big open space to consider. Uh, the setting, we decided that we wanted to have it as a 8-bit video game world just because it's kind of a fun place to learn and it was a little <laughs> nostalgic for us. So we wanted to play in that world a little bit. We do listen to our clients and their asks for what they want build, but every once in a while we get a build where Hillary and I get giddy because we can do kind of what we want, but it also helps everybody to learn. Um, yeah. I like I like picking sometimes and this video game world was just so good. <laughs> it's like it was like eating dessert every day. <laughs> so, and then the structure, um, we had uh, six parts. We broke it down in terms of like our basically a table of contents and expanded upon that. So, you know, there's the welcome message, the icebreaker, design, storytelling, the activity, question, answer, wrap ups. We kind of got that all in there and put it into levels because that's kind of game theme. Yep. Um, the emotion, we wanted to have, a, a, we wanted you to experience wonder and awe because we wanted it to be, um, we wanted to feed the curiosity, but also to help uh, kind of show you what can be done. Um, there's the tone, we wanted it to be nostalgic because it's kind of like was a fun thing for us and uh, on kind of a video game tone. Uh, symbolism was obviously of uh, kind of the levels of learning in a video game and the levels of kind of building that skills. Uh, the pacing was walking through obviously biomes. We wanted to have it as memorable experiences in those uh, environments. And the outcome was um, we wanted you guys to feel like, wow, I didn't know you could do that in Miro. That's super cool. <laughs> it's, it's not always the kind of thing you see in Miro. So hopefully that's, we we were hoping that gets across. Yeah. So folk, like from what you've experienced on this so far, if you guys could use the reactions button up top, the little party favor with the things blowing out, use your reactions and let us know if you think we've kind of achieved what we set out to around the theme, how it looks, how it feels, how we, how we kind of prep for this board. If you like it, give us a thumbs up or some fire. If you didn't like it as much, I'm not sure what we're having uh, emojis these days for that. For not liking something, I guess don't send an emoji, but everybody else, you can start to send them up because we like to see that. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That's amazing. Okay. Oh my God. These emojis dotted all over the landscape are incredible. It's so fun. Do you ever hear the phrase exceeded expectations? You, you all have. This is incredible. Okay. Let's have a little bit of fun, folks. we got some time left. Um, we want to get into an activity. So let me pull everybody to where I'm at on the board. I realize that um, you might hear my instructions and then we'll get going with things. But since we're at level four, we're going to first get you put into the right team because we can't do breakout rooms as part of this event. We've set up um, a bunch of uh, calendar dates. So if you're born January or February, click that link. Um, and we're kind of doing pairs of months. That's how you get to the workspace that you'll be on that team. When you get in here, I'll just use this first one as an example, and someone's brought their lovely avatar. It's wonderful. And those emojis are still flying. I never want to see them stop. Just keep what? hammering them. Um, so we have five activities here to complete. There is a word search. There is a uh, shape sorting. There's a jigsaw puzzle. There is a word scramble. And there is a crossword puzzle. So the team, you can work silently because you won't be able to communicate too much with each other. But you can work on whatever part you want. And as you solve an element, like the let's say you find the word Miro in this word search, when you're done that, drag the card up to the spot under the Kanban up here. And once that's done, then Hillary and I know that that task is complete and you can move on to the next task. You can use the pen tool to circle the word Miro here. You can also use the pen tool in the crossword. The uh, letters in the word search, you can move around. You're trying to complete the phrase there. So. Come up to this part of the board, click to find where your team is. I think some people have already started to jump in and get going. We'll give you a couple of minutes here, maybe seven or eight minutes and see how far we get or if we have a team that's actually winning. Feel free to bring that avatar along and have them have a little bit of fun. Hillary, why don't I watch teams one, two, and three's progress? You watch teams four, five, and six progress. I'm on it. <clears throat> And we'll see if we get some shapes and words and everything else. We definitely got so much Another fire. Got, <laughs> that puzzle's not easy. There's some black spaces that are hard to match up. 
And you'll see the Into the Mirrorverse, the little logo that the completed Jigsaw Puzzle as a reference is up there. Um, so Jigsaw Puzzles, uh, while folks are starting to work, is a really cool new toy that we've started to play with in Miro. Hillary can basically take any image uh, and make it into a Jigsaw Puzzle using some fancy script she's found in Adobe. So Yeah, and then it exports each piece as a separate image, so then they're movable, and, and then they all connect. Nice. And Hillary, can you please check if uh, January, February, and September, October boards uh, are actually shared for editing? Okay. Oh. Let's see. Oh, it looks like they might be somehow locked. Okay. We'll get that addressed right away, folks. Get that right away. And as is the case, whenever we're unlocking and relocking things at a live event, we may have unintentionally unlock some other things, folks. So remember that undo button if you accidentally move something. Control Z or Command Z is the, uh, is the command for that. Remember to throw the cards up in your Kanban as well once you finish a task so that we know that you're done. Team, uh, the later teams that Hillary is working on unlocking those spaces, you've just been given a, a, a handicap, so you'll have to just be much quicker. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We all win. We just want to play around. Feel free, anyone who is waiting for that to happen, you can jump over to another team and contribute there. Um, this isn't a ride or die kind of thing. So, <laughs> no, I think we're good now. We're, we're sorted. Nice. Oh, they're sailing along. Oh, I think I have a team that's bigger. Is that right? Can you confirm? Let me just double check. Yes. Boom, team four. Team four for the win. That's awesome. The other cool thing about using Jigsaw Puzzles, folks, in your designs is the team collaborative effort that you can go through, just like I'm seeing uh, team three do with Carolina, Christopher, Inez. You're doing a great job there. All right, folks. Well, team four, you are the lucky winners. You get bragging rights. You can tell everybody you're the absolute best at these four activities. Um, we want to start to transition things along, folks, just so that we um, give a little bit of time for uh, some Q&A and then give a little bit more time for our retro. So we have about 12 minutes left in this session. Um, I'm going to bring everybody along up to the uh, level five Q&A section. We'll spend just a couple of minutes here, but we wanted to just open it up to folks. Um, if you have any questions for us on round storytelling design about this board in particular, anything like that, we'll uh, just give you a few moments and please do keep bringing those amazing avatars along the way when they are standing on ladders and stuff. It just makes me a little bit giddy. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the trees now. <laughs> and on the clouds. Yeah, some stickies were grabbed. Okay, how do you balance uh, storytelling with the weight of the board? Well, that is an excellent question. Thank you for asking that one. Um, so it is definitely a concern about how much you have on a board. Um, I'm not sure if the issues we were having today were because oh, someone duplicated background again. No problem. I'm not sure if the issues we were having today were from the user load or from the design of the board. Like yesterday we were testing and it looked uh, absolutely fine and worked absolutely fine. Um, we use SVGs as our image format primarily because those are vector images that have the lowest file size. So once we get those um, loaded in, really it's trying to manage that number of objects with the number of files and other things that we've got. And we do a fairly extensive amount of testing to try and optimize. Uh, as an example of that, 
the entire backdrop here is one image rather than it being a modular set of images that we snap together. Um, we found typically that, you know, the fewer images, the fewer objects you have seem to optimize a bit more uh, for a mural board. So it is a balancing act to manage that stuff together. Um, and it does take some trial and error to figure out exactly what works. And then, unfortunately, the hard thing is testing because you, you have no idea what kind of computers or technology people are going to have if they have low amounts of RAM or an older rig. It might not work as well. So this kind of experience, we didn't optimize for the lowest common denominator. We really pushed the limits here. So if you noticed a little bit of slide or lag, that's likely why we're really, we've got a lot on here in terms of stickers and objects. Um, so yeah, it is a balancing act. I hope I'd answered that one okay. Um, okay, love the designs, but for those with less skill, how do we best achieve similar things? Hillary, do you wanna take a shot at that one? Oh yeah, I'd say stock photo, like stock photography, if you can get it, there's some subscriptions you can get that are really reasonable and you can um, pull a lot from there. They'll have sometimes like icons uh, and graphics that you can use as well in Miro, there's um, Upsplash. There's like a lot of images and stuff available within Miro that are really great. So it really comes down to planning each stage and then you can add like a detail of a photo that helps get a kind of a feeling across. But I'd say definitely lean hard on, on images that you can bring into the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We use some, um, Canva is a good uh, image editing program. It's pretty basic and simple, but you can do a lot of creative things to bring imagery in, uh, models, templates, things like that. Uh, and Envato is another one that we pay for. Um, it has tons of assets that you can use that really bolster your thing. And then Miro has so many built-in uh, icon finder. Um, there is the Unsplash. Um, there is uh, Undraw symbols. There's a lot of color that you can show in. Um, in these things that really bring them to life. I think to start though, going clean and simple is the best approach until you start to understand how items play on each other. You don't want noise or um, Hillary uses so many f fancy designing terms that I try to keep up with, but you don't want your designs to detract um, yeah. from, from what they're doing. The, the outcomes of what you want to get done, the work that needs to be done is number one, absolutely. But if it can be fun and playful or professional and, and easy to navigate, those are the things you want to, uh, to really focus on. So true, so true. Um, background, um, people are loving Hills. Can you talk a bit about the image size and placement? <clears throat> uh, well, the size I think is about three meg. We managed to get it down because it's that's one of the nice things about 8-bit is it is uh, on the smaller side. We've done some things with backgrounds of photos and you have to really save them out as, you know, as small as you can get them because you don't want it to affect the loading of the board. So in terms of placement, it's just on there and then we built everything on top of that. We always lock the background first so that we don't have it, you know, moving around or causing any problems. And then, and then we build everything else on top of that. Yep, that's right. Um, where do you find new inspiration to enhance your creativity? Uh, oh, well, all over. Uh, where we see, where we go, talking to each other. We love throwing out just general ideas Usually if you start at something that you're going to be focusing on, the purpose, the outcome, the type of people you're going to be working with, some of the elements start to slide out. Is it going to be fun? Is it going to be professional? Can we, can we relay some kind of a real world theme to it? And then once you find that theme, video game, 8-bit, it starts to resonate in other, like that supports learning, that supports beautiful design, very colorful um, progression, um, experience, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's some of the areas in just in just brainstorming. Look around your world. I think Hillary, you've taught some classes to to kids about like observing your your environment and drawing what you see, right? Yeah, yeah. I've t I've gone to the schools sometimes, and we do what's called plein air painting, which is basically painting outdoors as a way to experience your environment and just really see. So it's just it could be honestly an, a crumb of an idea, and then you can just work on it and chew on it and it can become something bigger and more thought through but nothing like don't don't think any like there's no bad ideas like just just work i mean maybe there is but but there is um like just keep chewing on it, it it'll get there and it's it's just a way of you gotta it takes time yeah yeah okay um let me before answering some more of these questions folks i just want to transition us up because i want to be mindful of our time we're, we're going to be done in five 
Um, so let me bring us all up here. I do see people typing. I apologize for this, but I'm going to bring you all up to our retrospective. Um, before we go back to complete those questions, there's a bit of a retro here. Um, once again, we have this life bar heart thing. Grab a sticky and let us know how we did um, from game over on the low end to not half bad or my heart is full on the right. That is great. Any, um, there's some stickies here. If you have appreciations, takeaways, learning moments, we'd love to hear them. We always want to make our sessions better in the future. So please help us do that by giving us um, your honest feedback. Um, and then on the right here are the contact details for Hillary and I. This kind of creation is what Hillary and I do. Um, we don't um, think this is a, a widespread approach to take this kind of graphic and storytelling effort. So if you want to work with us, you want to see more of what we do, you want to attend some of our events, um, then, then connect with us, send us an email, connect with us on LinkedIn. And on the right here, we've got a checklist um, that we want to make available. We can't download it from this board because the permissions are turned off, but click here, send me an email, say, hey, John, attended your session. I'd love to get this. We've created a checklist here um, that covers areas like content management, board management, sharing, and then ideas for during and after the event. It's a pretty comprehensive checklist for anyone who's gonna be running a Miro event. So just drop us an email, we'll send you this PDF and watch out, we're gonna put a version of, of with more video, um, video support and demonstrations in the Miroverse. So that's coming up soon. Uh, so you can click that way and get in touch. We'd love to talk about what you're doing in Miro and see, maybe we can learn from you. That would be amazing. Um, so while folks are just getting around on the retrospective, I'm just going to bring my screen back down here to answer questions for another two minutes, and then we do our outro. How does that sound, Hills? All We're right. getting into quick answer mode. Folks, we will answer all these questions, too, in green and put it back on this board, even if we've answered them verbally, because I believe this board's going to remain open for a bit for view-only access. Natalie is nodding, so I know that's good. Um, so here's some more questions. Is the board available for own use? Is this one? No, it is not. Um, we're thinking of putting it into the Miroverse. It's hard with these creations um, and how to deploy them. We're thinking about it. So how about that? We'd love to do one for you, though. Um, <laughs> how long does it take to create something like this? Uh, a bit. It does take a bit of time, folks. There's nothing stock as part of this experience, it really was a lot of work from Hillary's point of view, taking inspiring images, uh, combining them, getting the elements she needs, then eight bidding eyes. I would have to say this would be what, like 40 hour build maybe Hillary? Oh, not quite, but not like, quite. I'd say it took a couple of weeks, but not full time. Okay, but that's a good also way to, put to, to speak to that, we were gonna say we were gonna do um, like a presentation on how we made this. Yeah. You know, coming up if you wanted to mention that yeah let's so we're gonna just a coffee kind of a fireside chat of how we came up with this experience we'll take you through our process show you some of our sketch drawings our ideas all that we just want to chat so that we can share how to create good stories so again connect with us on linkedin you will probably be in about two weeks um and you can uh, you can find out more about uh, our detail and how we get into that stuff we, we share trade secrets because we just we feel like everybody should can and should be doing this kind of thing to make their experiences better well, it's, there's no scarcity. It's like, it's the, the world right. is your oyster. You can make anything. Yeah. How do you create backgrounds if you don't have other graphics applications? The, the Some of the live ones, like we said, Envato before Canva, those are free. Some free tools are can be found with those. And some of the built-in tools within Miro uh, can be leveraged. You can also like just grab objects and images online that you find and like repurpose them, use the cropping tool. You can create all kinds of really interesting stuff. Uh, doing that way. How is Miro addressing accessibility of needs of users? Not, can't talk to that one. I'm sorry. We can fire that one over to Miro and hopefully get someone there to answer. How many people worked on this board? There were two of us that got this all up and running. I did see one other comment on layers. How did you manage so many? It's really hard, yo. Really <laughs> hard. <laughs> Um, bring to yeah, front, bring to front. it is. It takes a lot. Yeah. Bring to front, bring to front. We don't ever use send to back. Okay, that's all we can answer live. I am so sorry. It's time to for us to say goodbye, but we loved spending time with you. We really, really were excited to share this with you. Um, we love this experience so much, and this is the exact kind of thing we're going to continue to do um, going into the future. So thank you so much for your time and attention. Hillary, great job. Thanks, thank Natalie, you. for all the support. We love you, everybody. We'll see you out there, and good luck to the uh, final contestants today for the celebration and award ceremony. Thank you. Thank you very much, John and Hillary. That was amazing. And we are ready to move on to our next session. So stay tuned.